Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed one six scale figure unboxing and review. Now today we are taking a look at Soso -So Toys Omnipotent Hero aka Omni-Man from Amazon Prime's Invincible, a show I absolutely love and a character I do as well. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, no no, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. And it's an unlicensed, unofficial figure at that. While you are down in the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, it is simple yet really effective, I dig it. Up top, so so toys then, omnipotent hero. If you're wondering where the heck this name came from, well, Omni-Man? Omnipotent, so yeah, it kind of makes sense. Down below, an image of Omni-Man, I believe that is the figure's head sculpt, but potentially not the figure's body. In the background, a city skyline with an ominous red sky. On the side of the box, the skyline continues. On the back, more skyline, plus the warnings and legal info. Now if we slide off the top cover, we have more artwork. Another skyline plus another image of Omni-Man with the figure's secondary head sculpt. Now, so, so Toys have announced their version of Invincible, and I cannot wait to get that figure. Like I said in the intro, I'm a huge fan of this show. First in-hand impressions are, yeah, this guy feels really substantial. He's also not wearing his cape because so so toys, they were worried about staining this white suit. Now, it could potentially happen. I would suggest washing the cape first before you attach it. It's packaged separately underneath the clam tray. Just to avoid any potential staining issues, go ahead and get that done. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, it's done in the usual so so toy style. It's hexagonal and rather chonky. I dig the colour scheme with some darker shading on the white and in the red. We have a Omni-Man logo in the middle with a healthy smattering of blood. Up top, a multi-jointed articulated flight pole arm and a spring-loaded waist clamp. It is padded, but please be careful. His waist is rather chonky and you wouldn't want this to dig into the suit over time and cause damage. When it comes to head sculpts, we get two of them and I like them both. In fact, I like them so much that I'm struggling to pick my favourite of the two. Starting off with the neutral one, I think it looks like a buff J. Jonah Jameson as an evil superhero. The skin texture is really nicely painted and I like the hair as well. There are wispy bits around the front, the texture for the grey section is nicely sculpted. Overall, yeah, it's a very strong sculpt. Then we have the angry head sculpt, this one's strong too. All of that stuff I just mentioned about the standard one applies here, but this time his mouth is open. And this isn't a Hot Toys Ant-Man situation, there's some depth here. The mouth is a separate piece that's been slotted in around the back. His teeth are semi-translucent, overall it's very realistic. Do let me know which of these two head sculpts you prefer down below. You also get two handheld accessories, but technically one straight up is a hand, it's his catching glove. There's some leather-like texture on the surface and some shading. I also dig the fact that he's wearing this over his standard glove. You can see the dark red poking through. This does have a wrist peg port, so it doesn't slide over a hand. It is the hand. Then we get a severed alien head and... This guy, he's seen better days. His head has been chopped off, it's glossy and gross looking. He's got blood out of the corner of his mouth, a bruised eye. Yeah, this poor fellow, he hasn't had an easy go of it. You can also remove the hand if you just want this lying on the display base. It's totally up to you. Speaking of hands, we do get a full array. Ranging from close fists to open palm hands to think mark think hands. Don't worry, we'll try out the pose later. I like the way they're sculpted. 
they look like leather. There's some green on the surface and some wrinkles, like gloves would have. There's also some darker shading over the lighter red. What we are going to do now though is get Omni-Man himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that, although I do have his cape on. I will be taking it off in just a second and showing you how to install it. Now, for the most part, I'm happy. This guy, I think, looks awesome. The body is very cartoony in its proportions, broad shoulders, narrow waist, chonky thighs, but... This guy is based off a cartoon, so I think it fits the bill. Some people are really not going to like it because his proportions are different, but who's to say that if Omni-Man existed in real life, he wouldn't look this way? We simply don't know. So-so toys exercise their creative liberties here and... They had every right to do so, I think it's worked. You can of course though swap the body if this one just doesn't float your boat. Then the outfit on top of the body is skin tight, you can see the musculature and vein work poking through, a nice touch. I love the colours, and you'll already know, I dig those head sculpts. If you're wondering if it's difficult to pop the cape on, the answer is kind of yes and no. The first thing I would recommend doing is unzipping the suit, it'll make your life a whole lot easier, just trust me. Then you want to flip over the collar, and you can see some teeny tiny metal D-rings. Then what you want to do is bring in the cape, line up the little hooks, and hook it on underneath the collar. Once you've done that, you can of course flip him right back over and do up that zipper. Now this zipper is a teeny tiny little 1-6 scale zipper. Just take your time and make sure you do it all the way up to keep the suit nice and tight on the body. We're almost done, I promise. The last thing you need to do is some futzing. You simply want to pull it around and move the cape in position. So when you have him standing there, it just drapes naturally out of the top of his collar over his shoulders. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the head sculpt first. Now, you all know I already like both of them, but on the body it gets even better. They don't sit too high, they don't sit too low, everything in my mind is in proportion. The skin tone match between the sculpt and the neck is also on point. I do like how he's got this sculpted rubbery collar that kind of tucks into the actual suit collar. It makes for a more seamless blend, plus you get to tuck the cape in like we've already discussed. As for the second head sculpt though, now this head sculpt, this is more like it. This is the one I'm going with in my collection. He's angry, he's pissed off, or he's screaming at Invincible. Think, Mark, think. His mouth obviously being open, it's so much more expressive. The hair is wild, his eyebrows are furrowed. Yeah, this totally tells a story which, as you all know, I'm all about. Around the back, we need to address this cape because it's a little bit controversial. There were some warnings that went out saying it could potentially stain the back of the body because the suit is white. This is red dyed fabric. Totally could happen. Was it worth the risk though? Is this cape actually any good? For me at least, yeah, it was. This cape is awesome. It's this two-ply, very lightweight fabric that drapes really naturally. Think Hot Toys BVS Superman. Yeah, it's that good. It also has a wire down the edge, so you can pose it too. So you pretty much get the best of both worlds. A really natural drape, a lightweight fabric, and it tucks in at the collar with the pleats. But if you want to get to some crazy posing, there's a wire in it for good measure. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, it's the back of the figure. It doesn't really matter if it gets stained. That's something that you need to decide. For me, I genuinely don't care. If a bit of red rubs off on his back or his booty, it's not a big deal. But I know some people, they do care, so... Yeah, wash your cape, fingers crossed, some of that excess dye is taken out in the wash. Now, we do have to talk about his body. It's big and beefy for his shoulders and his upper torso, slims down for the waist. Very comic book looking proportions, totally checks the box for me. I also like the textured fabric, there's a little bit of detail on the surface, and of course, the big honking red O. You've got this darker red outline, the piping that 
also extends around the top of the red section for his pants, if you want to call them pants. He does have this split cut design for the gauntlet with this leather like texture on the surface plus a little bit of shading, they look suitably real. And I'm fairly certain realism, that was the goal here. He's got this musculature poking through the suit, some vein work, there's even detail for the kneecaps, that's crazy. Some people probably would have preferred a huge bulky M35 body, and if you want to switch the body out, you can totally do that. But for me, the proportions of this body, they tread the line between comic proportions and realism very well. He does have the red pants with some darker shading in the crevices to bring out all the musculature. Then down here for the boots, they're done in the same way as the gauntlets. There's this leather-like texture, grain sculpted in, in a stark white, but there's also some shading in the recesses and the crevices just to make them, you guessed it, look a little bit more real. I do like the split up the top, it is accurate to the show. Then on the underside, some fully sculpted tread. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have So So Toys Omni-Man on the left, and on the right, the SSR version. Now, some people remember the SSR version very fondly. Maybe too fondly, maybe you all have got your rose-tinted glasses on just like I did. I remember him being bigger and more imposing, but here you can tell he isn't. The So So Toys one is the bigger of the two. SSR is much broader and thicker, but my eye is being drawn to So So. The extra detail on the suit and the head sculpt, plus the color of red, it's deeper and richer. Then the stark white, it absolutely pops. Because I did mention this boy a little bit earlier, it's the Hot Toys BVS Soups, but he's wearing a custom V. Collectibles head sculpt. He's a little bit shorter than Omni Man. Does that bother me? No, not really. I don't mind that Omni Man is huge and big and imposing, he kind of gives me that vibe in the show. Plus, when we get Invincible, having them paired up, there's going to be a height difference, which works for father and son. For those wondering what the So So Toys head sculpt looks like on the SSR body, here that is. Now, it's worth noting that they're not super compatible. The neck connector is a different size on this Fison body versus the stock So So one. So when you slide the head sculpt on, it sits there for a minute, but... It slowly but surely works its way off the neck connector, and his neck gets really long. So in my collection, I'm going to just stick with the head sculpts that came on their respective bodies. Also, the suit here is devoid of detail. There's no texture, there's no shading, which stands in stark contrast to the head sculpt that has all of that. It looks way more realistic. Although, there is something about this head sculpt that just works here. This body, the style of suit, it's starting to win me over. Now, if you do own both Omni-Mans, nothing's stopping you from doing this. Pop the angry head sculpt on one of them, use the stock head sculpt on the so-so body, and you can display both options. One angry and one normal. Then, of course, we have the SSR head on the so, -so body, and it's a no from me, it looks ridiculous. It sits really high up on the neck, it's tiny in comparison to the body, plus the skin tone match is non-existent, it's a completely different colour. So, like I've said already, one more time, I'm gonna stick with the head sculpt this body came with. Going over articulation. Do bear in mind, this is my personal copy, so I'm going to be a touch more careful. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a fixed neck with a double ball peg up on top, looking forward to there, looking up to there, more than enough range for flight poses in my opinion, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, they will go forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down, swivel at the bicep, single bend at the elbow on soft ratchets getting you to 90, plus a hinge and swivel for the wrist peg. Now the torso is largely fixed thanks to the abs as an overlay, but you get a touch of swivel, some crunch forward and back, and some pivot as well. The legs do go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee going way past 90, 
And lastly, a split cut boot design with a double ball peg for the ankle. Wrapping up on Soso Toys Omnipotent Hero, aka Omni Man from Amazon Prime's Invincible. I really like this guy. Going into this, I'd seen a lot of the comments online. People have said, what are those proportions on that body? Why is the suit so textured? Why is it so bright? Well, all of those things in person, at least for me, they're non-issues. I love the color of the suit. It's bright, it pops in the display. The texture adds a little bit more visual interest, something to look at, slightly more realistic. And the body, I reckon it works here. It's big and bulky, it makes him look and feel very imposing. This body is very heavy. Plus, I think the articulation is good enough. Would I have liked double bend elbows? Yes, of course, but without them, is this guy a fail immediately? No, I don't think so. The accessories get a tick from me, and so too do the head sculpts. Now, one word of warning, please wash your cape. If you don't, you're going to stain this guy almost immediately. I washed it in a bowl of warm water with vinegar and salt. It helped set the dye, and luckily, I have had very little staining on mine. At the end of the day, if you're thinking, Justin, you're clearly biased. You're telling us this guy is better because for some reason you want us to buy it. Actually, no. I couldn't care less if you buy this one, if you buy the SSR one, or you buy nothing. It's entirely up to you. Make your decision. I'm just giving you my opinion. This, after all, is my review. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. While you are down in the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.